I like Solid Rail Q Stirp here. So we're going to be talking about completing the square with this. And uh, you might have a lot of questions off this, so happy to answer those when we're in class. So there's a couple of problems. When we all multiply these together, you realize that's x minus 4 times x minus 4, so you're going to get x squared minus 8x plus 16. This next one would be 9x squared plus 30x plus 25. And the last one's going to be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. If we foil them out. So now consider this. So if that was x plus 3 as a length and x plus 3 as a width, then the area would be x squared plus 6x plus 9. So they're perfect squares. Same thing here. 2x minus 5. 2x minus 5 is length and width. And then the area would be uh, area would be 4x squared minus 20x plus 25. So that's a complete square because you have the exact same two binomials. Okay, so what would the values be needed for this diagram? So this would be, uh, uh, let's see, 7x4, that would be a 49. This would be um, a 1 there. That would be squared. We have to get there. Let's ask about this one in class. I'm just uh, kind of drawing a blank on that right now. But we'll figure out in class. All right, so perfect square trinomial. So this is going to be a plus b quantity squared. This is going to be a minus b quantity squared. This one would be x plus 5 and x plus 5, so x plus 5 quantity squared. These are all perfect squares. This is x minus 6 quantity squared. This would be um, x minus 7 over 2 quantity squared. And this last one is going to be x plus half quantity squared. And again, we can ask about class how I did this so quickly. They were perfect square trinomials. So, if I wanted to find my last value, I'm going to take half of this, which is 6, and square it. Okay? So you always will add the value, find half the coefficient, half the x term, and square that value. So to make sure um, ax squared plus bx is perfect squared, c has to be a perfect square. So, so half of the middle term and half of the middle term. Make sure we are um, watching our signs on there. Okay, so what is the C value? Well, half of this term is negative 6. Negative 6 squared is 36, so plus 6. Half of this is 9. 9 squared is 81. Now factor the expression as a perfect square. So this would have been x minus 6 and x minus 6, which is x minus 6 quantity squared. The top one here would have been x plus 9 and x plus 9, which turns into x plus 9 quantity squared. All right, so what does that uh, C value have to be? Half of, uh, half of that is going to be 4. 4 squared is 16. So that would factor to x minus 4 and x minus 4, which is the same thing as x minus 4 quantity squared. What's half of 1? Half of 1 is half. Half squared is a fourth. So this one would be x plus half quantity squared. And we get to this one. So this is a little bit tougher. So we have to kind of think about doing that. So let's talk about this more in class. Okay. This next one, half of 2 is negative 2 is negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1, so it would be a plus 1, so this would be x minus 1 quantity squared. And notice that c value is always going to be positive. This one, half of 5 is 5 over 2, 5 over 2 squared is 25 over 4, so half of 5 was 5 over 2 quantity squared. 
half of 7 is 7 over 2. Quantity squared, 7, 7 over 2 squared is 49 over 4. And that's what your C value would be. Positive. So factor each as the square. Uh, so half, it's going to be x minus half quantity squared. This one, let's talk more in class. So how do I solve these? OK, so if I was going to go, I'm going to take square root of both sides. Don't forget the plus minus. So I get x plus 4 equals plus or minus 5, because square root of 25 is that. Then I'm going to subtract 4. So I'm going to get an answer of 1 and an answer of negative 9. That's what x is equal to. This one, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Don't forget that it's plus or minus. So add 2 to both sides. And that counts as two answers, 2 plus root 7 and 2 minus root 7. All right, so when we want to do, we when we just want to solve complete a square, if it's not a perfect square, I'm going to move that over. I'm going to leave myself a space, though. I'll subtract the 9. Half of 10 is 5, so 5 squared. So that means 5 squared is add 25. If I add 25 to the left side, I have to add 25 to the right. Root of both sides, don't forget the plus minus. And subtract 5 and do the arithmetic. Negative 1 plus 4 is ne or negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. Negative 5 minus 4 is negative 9. There's my two solutions. Again, this one, I'm going to move the constant over. So I'll add it, leave the space. Half of 20 is 10. 10 squared is 100. Add 100 to both sides equals 125. Take the square root of both sides. Don't forget the plus minus. Uh, that can break up to 25 times 5. So it's going to be 5 root 5 for an answer when you break down 125. So then my answer is x equals negative 10 plus or minus 5 root 5. Solve each equation by completing the square. Let's move the 5 over. Leave the space. Half of 6 is 3. Look at that. I left the sign the same, though. 3 squared is positive 9, so add 9, add 9. So that's going to give me a 4. Root, root. Don't forget the plus minus. Plus or minus 2. I'm going to do the arithmetic. Like 3 plus 2 and 3 minus 2. So we get 5 and 1. For this one, two things I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply everything by a negative first. And then I'm going to subtract the 44. You want to have that be positive out front. Leave the space, subtract 44. So half of negative 12 is negative 6. Notice the sign stayed the same. 6 squared is 36, so add 36 to both sides. That's going to give me negative 8 root root. So I'm going to get x minus 6, don't forget the plus minus, equals plus or minus. I'm going to have an i for my answer, and that breaks up 4 times 2, so I get 2i root 2, and then add 6 to that. And this is as far as you can go with this problem. Nice, complex answer. Okay, let's keep going. Let's move that 10 over by adding it. What's half of 5? Half of 5 is 5 over 2. Square that. 25 over 4. If I add 25 over 4 this side, I'm going to add it to over this side. So 10 is the same thing as 40 over 4. So I'm going to get 65 over 4. Square root both sides. Don't forget the plus minus. Uh, let's see, plus or minus root 65 on top. What's the square root of 4? Yeah, there's no more, a, no longer a radical. Add 5 halves to both sides. If you have the same denominator, you can write it as this form as well. 
that's preferred. This is actually the preferred answer, but if you left this answer here, I think I'd be okay with you. But if there's multiple choice, I would have that as your answer. Okay, now what we have to figure out what to do if we don't have a leading coefficient that's not one. So on this first one, it's kind of easy. I'm going to divide everything by three, and a three goes into everything evenly, which is nice. Okay, I'm going to leave a space, move the five over. So half of eight is four. Make sure the sign's the same. Four squared is 16. Add 16, add 16. So I'm going to get nine. Root, root. Don't forget the plus minus. Subtract four. Do the arithmetic. Negative four plus three is negative one. Negative four minus three is negative seven. All right, so let's move, let's move the 10 over first on this one. Leave that, so I'm going to have negative 10. I'm going to divide everything by 3. Notice I left that as an improper fraction. Okay, half of 4, or half of negative 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is positive 4, so if I add 4 here, I'm going to add 4 here. Realize that's the same thing as 12 over 3. So negative 10 plus 12 is 2. So I get 2 over 3. Okay, root root. Don't forget the plus minus. And I don't like keeping two thirds like that, so I'm going to multiply both top and bottom by root three and root three. So I'm going to get root six over three, and then add two to that. And that answer is fine. Some people might choose to put it together where they make two six over three, but it's your choice what you want to do on that problem. So I guess you could have six plus or minus root six all over three. Okay. That's a tougher one, so I think both those answers are 100% appropriate. Okay, so what do you know about completing the square? So, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to move the negative over here. So I change all the signs. You good with that? Alright, I'm not going to move the 1 over. I'm not I'm just going to leave a space. Let's do this. Oops. I'm going to X, oops, well, come back. Notice I left a space. Okay. So half of negative 4 is negative 2 quantity squared. So if I add 4, I'm also going to subtract 4. So this is the important thing to remember right here. This right here is what I get if I go X minus 2 times X minus 2 and foil it out, but then I get negative 5 here. Now, I don't want to have a negative y, so then I'm going to multiply everything by a negative 1. I'm not distributing that negative 1 in. So this now has a vertex of 2, 5. So 2 up 5. My pattern graph, because I have a negative, is going to be down 1, right 1. Right 1, down 3. Left 1, down 3, so on and so forth. So that's what this parabola looks like. Yeah, we would have this axis of symmetry being this. So the AOS is x equals 2. Okay, make sure you bring those questions to class. Okay, we kind of covered a lot in this video. Have a great day, my friends. Take care of one another. Bye-bye.